uh, introduce our Juris Professional Services team. First, we have Celeste Bradford, field consultant. Next is Tyler Chapman, senior field consultant. And we also have Stan Graham, CPA and field consultant, all for the Juris Professional Services team. This team has a variety uh, of knowledge that just completely spans the board. So you guys are going to get some great insight into professional services today and how you can get Juris working even better for you. So at this time, um, I'm going to hand it over to the team, and you guys uh, can introduce Juris Professional Services. Thanks, everybody. Now, this is Stan Graham talking, and I'm uh, one of the three people on your panel today, although we have more than three of us on our team. And our goal today is to give you a better idea of what exactly our professional services teams do and what we can do for you. And, and, I, and we're going to give some examples as we go along as well as far as different little uh, weird things or, or, or things we've helped clients with that they thought were unusual or they were afraid couldn't be done or they couldn't do. And so we're going to try to give you some examples that might spur you into uh, uh, things that we might be able to help you with. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to run through this little outline of topics and, and the types of things that we help with. And then each of us are going to uh, share a couple of examples of different clients that we've helped, although names will be changed to protect the innocent. So if you happen to be on, the, on there and know that we're talking about your firm, um, then you can certainly affirm that, but we're not going to, to divulge you know, who they are. So the first thing is, we can bring a lot of industry uh, best practices to your firm um, as far as the sort of things as how to, to close your month in, how to do things efficiently, and the things that are specific to a law firm that you may or may not be aware of. We also help with customized workflows. Um, a lot of those are designed with the consultants. We work with you. We partner with you, and, it, and it's based on what your needed outcomes are. Um, we're all product experts on our team. We can help you become more efficient. As the example says here, why take five steps when you can take two? We can help you implement new modules if you add on things to Juris or Juris Suite that you didn't have before. We can help with that. We do a lot of new team member onboarding, anywhere from a new uh, clerical person or billing person all the way up to a controller or CFO. We're able to help bring them on uh, on board and help them understand how Juris works and how it works for them. We do custom reporting. We can re any anytime you're doing a report in Excel that you pulled money out of Juris is a report that we could do at a push of a button. So we help with those sort of things. Uh, we can reduce your workload um, and reduce your current reporting package by consolidating information and all into one page instead of a bunch of different reports. Katie, if you go to the next slide for me, please. We also help with things that are, can be accounting related or trust related. We do a lot of work with trust account reconciliation. Um, I think everyone knows how important accurate trust accounting can be and how the firm can get in trouble if they don't do it correctly. Uh, we'll help you balance your client costs to make sure that, particularly if you keep them on the balance sheet, um, that they're correctly balanced and things are not sitting on the balance sheet that should come off in situations like that. We can develop custom tools to help you with things. And one of the examples that I'm going to give for myself where I help the client is that I had a client that, um, and, and one of the things that you're finding in the industry is your clients are demanding things out of you that are outside your normal process. Um, because if you want our business, they expect you to do certain things. Well, I had a client that um, took on a new client that had a lot of matters, and their agreement was that they would only send a bill um, for each matter that had a balance of $100 or more. So what they were doing is, prior to my helping them, 
was they were um, they would pull the pre bills, then they would go through and look at the open pre bill report, highlight the ones that were over a hundred dollars, and then they would delete the pre bills that were under that, and then they would um, have to reprint them one at a time in order to give them to the attorney because they didn't want to print them all out except for the ones that they knew were $100 or more. What we did is we developed a custom tool that would allow them to put in the client and then it would run and it would look to see, it would pull the pre-bills and it would look to see which ones were over $100 or more and those would be set to ready to reprint so that they could reprint them all at once instead of one at a time and it would automatically delete the one the pre bills that were not in there. And it took a manual visual process that would that was taking half a day or longer for them to do and and literally got it down to just a few minutes of work. And everything got to the attorneys quicker and things turned around faster. So that's just one of one of the examples of, of where I was able to help a firm. Also, there's Jura Suite Alert. Uh, where we can set up event triggers where something happens, you receive an email to let you know that something happened. We also can help you with payroll entry and balancing. We can develop evergreen retainer workflows for you. And we can also help you with bill formats that link to the payment portals um, and, and can be customized. If you're particularly in Jurist BX, if you're going in and uh, manually changing the text files that you're uploading to your client, we can build a BX format that will boom, it'll put it in that format right for you. So that's an overview of kind of the things. Um, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it over to um, Tyler here and I'm going to let him give a couple examples along these topics here that we've just gone over uh, where he's helped firms. So Tyler, I'll give it to you. Excellent. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tyler Chapman. I'm a consultant here with uh, LexisNexis and the Juris Professional Services team. One of the examples I want to give has to do with payroll entry and balancing. This was a case in which a firm had had a shift in duties of the staff and another person had both A, picked up the duties of, of reconciling and logging the payroll into Juris, and B, they had also switched payroll providers and they went to a more streamlined, one-stop shopping solution in which they handled benefits in addition to the payroll processing and direct depositing. So not only um, did they get themselves slightly out of whack with the accounts they were using, but also the reporting changed. So what they did was they engaged us to um, review uh, from a high level what was being pulled in, A, how they were doing it before with their old journal entry template, and B, you know, the new pieces of information they were being uh, provided by the payroll providers. So what we did is we took a very holistic approach, st uh, stepped back, reviewed the new reports, reviewed the old process, and between the two of us, we went through and modified their template and, you know, marked up and ticked and tied the reports that they get to just review to make sure that the payroll is being entered, how to reverse all the prior entries that needed to be backed out so that they could um, get their numbers tied out to to, they, to what they were before. As you all know, you may have a lot of accounts that are holding accounts that are wash accounts and what it ended up happening was they accidentally had a lot of balances that rolled forward in some of those, those pass-through accounts. So we just you know kind of took a step back, got a fresh pair of eyes on the situation and reworked the um, journal entry and the data points to get it uh, streamlined and reconfigured for the new process and fully explain it so not only can the person doing it now explain it to others, but they know what they're doing rather than just repeating what was given to them. Um, another example was a, um, a client cost advanced balancing situation I worked through with um, a newer client that we had. They were coming from one software who managed it in one direction. We brought them over to Juris, which ha has its own methods for balancing, and we worked through a, a series of um, exercises to help them balance it. They like to review everything daily to make sure that the uh, transactions were flowing through the system as intended. So what we did was we set up a series of reports to look at things 
dated whenever but done on a certain date so that way they can make sure that all of the expenses they were recording had the appropriate GL accounts on and all the expenses they were paying were going to the right GL accounts as well um, so that way they could spend about you know, half hour, 45 minutes at the end of their day to review their client cost advanced activity and make sure that no errors had been made in the process. Um, and so that was one thing that uh, we worked through for them, which helped keep them more familiar and ease the transition over to, to Juris. Celeste, did you want to give a couple of examples about how you've helped some of our clients? Certainly, this is Celeste Bradford. I'm a consultant on the professional services team as well. Uh, one of the challenges that I helped a client overcome was being able to show to their client on their monthly invoices the amount of replenishment, trust replenishment needed, oftentimes called evergreen billing. Basically, the client needs to have a retainer on, on file at all times. Um, so a utility, an outside utility, was created when the billing personnel would select the pre-bills, they would run the utility and it would go look at a specific field on the matter where they had entered in the replenishment balance. And it would look at the current amount of the invoice, subtract the amount of trust or evergreen monies used, calculate the replenishment amount, and place that value back into an additional matter billing field. All of those fields were then placed on the final bill design. The key piece of this was the AR balance due that's actually injurious was not increased by the replenishment additional amount. They didn't want that to be included in the AR. It was just to let the client know, this is how much additional funds you need to submit to keep it to your agreed upon fee agreement replenishment balance. Um, so again, with that, it was a custom utility that was created and also a bill format that was created place the matter billing field so it, it looked like a nice flow and the total AR balance due at the very, very bottom included that additional amount. Uh, another thing that we do very often for clients is just help them streamline their bill formats. Uh, you, know, you may have started out, you may have been a jurist client for years and years and years, but you may want to revamp just to something as simple as the look of your bill designs. Well, you may not spend time every day working on bill formatting, so we can assist you with that, get a new fresh look. We have created a section on the bill, bill format for remittance copy. So whether you're mailing hard copies of the invoices or you're emailing them to your client, there's a remittance page and it can contain all of your banking information, ADA routing number, et cetera. We also have had clients that have had an electronic payment portal where it always simply do is create a text box on the bill format with a hyperlink. So if the client is receiving that invoice via email, they simply click on the hyperlink and it takes them directly to that payment portal. So things like that that are relatively simple to do that can streamline efficiency within the firm tremendously. Um, another thing that I did with a, an existing firm, they had um, a client situation where they would have an insured and the insurer. Both of those were set up as clients. And they were having great difficulty in tracking, has the client paid their deductible? When do I start billing the insurer instead of the insured? So we created a, a workflow within the product to where they would bill the client up to their insured amount. And then they had reports they would monitor as well. And it would show the insured inception today, have they met their personal deductible? Now it's time for us to start billing the insurer. We created a custom report that put both of those matters beside each other so the staff could, and the billing partners could determine the AR for each one. It wasn't just, okay, well, I've billed the insured this month, this bill, and then have to manually go in there and track it, which is what they had been doing up to that point. And it was extremely time intensive because this was the majority of the type of work that they did. So again, if something as simple as changing a workflow, having custom reports that fits the information out for you where you're not having to manually track it. Also on that, you could also set up an alert. Um, you know, very often you just want to look over the report, but if you don't take the time to look at the report, maybe it's something that you need to be notified immediately of. I need to know when this client has met or exceeded their um, 
you know, they're deductible. I need to know, bam, let me know, give me an alert and set up to run daily, uh, maybe weekly, to notify me that the client has met a deductible or any other criteria within, uh, within the database. It could be when the client is, um, their prepaid balance is below a certain amount. You know, basically any number, any criteria, statistic, metric that you're having to manually stop and go look at, you can have an alert set up to take the worry out of your day, go ahead and just notify me when this event happens, then I can go take my action that needs to be taken, whether it's calling the client, notifying the billing timekeeper, et cetera. And I will turn it over to the next person. Okay, this is Stan back again. Um, I was going to give a couple other examples of some of the things that we did. You know, one of the problems that you run into in your position is that you're busy all day long. And and sometimes you, you might think there's got to be an easier way. There's got to be a better way, but you don't have time to do it because you have to get the work done. That's where our team is able to help with those sort of things. We're able to come in sit down, have you describe your pain points for us, and then come up with a solution. I may not be able to come up with one right off the top of my head, but I'll probably have a good idea. But you also have the advantage of, of me being able to go to Tyler and Celeste or Kathy or other people on our team and share that, and you get a whole group team approach of people coming up with best ways to do whatever your unique situation is. I had an example of a of a firm I worked with that needed to um, basically have the same time entry put on multiple matters, um, but the timekeeper would only enter one time entry for say like 0.2 hours. But it needed but this 0.2 needed to go on 20 different clients and matters. So. They were spending a lot of time creating new entries, making copies of them, and changing the client matter. And I helped them out by using the split tool in Jura Suite to set up a template. So all they had to do, because they had to, always had the same 10 or 20 uh, matters in there, all they had to do is pick the template, highlight the entry, and it would just, boom, it would create all the entries for them, and all they had to do is submit them and post them. They didn't have to, you know, it, it really cut down the amount of time. Sometimes you may not be aware of all the features that you have in the software. A lot of times I'll liken this to the fact of, uh, or, or I'll compare it to a, a python trying to swallow a hippopotamus. There's just so much stuff you can't digest it, and that's where having us, so the product experts, the process experts, the accounting experts, being able to help you with those things, because we've focused on all those aspects and we're not distracted by the day-to-day -day work that you're trying to get done with just getting checks and bills out there. I had a firm I worked with that every Friday, each billing attorney had to receive their accounts receivable, their age they are, for just their matters. And the, the firm administrator was frustrated because she lost her admin all every Friday afternoon because it took her all afternoon to do that for all the billing timekeepers. And, and then if she was on vacation, the admin had to, the firm administrator had to do it. And it was a lot of work. And it was as simple as helping them set up a report distribution and go through, and they didn't realize they even had the feature, and go through and set it up for automatic delivery at noon every Friday. And they were just ecstatic with the fact that they had a half day given back to them. I know a lot of you work more than 40 hours a week. If you'd like to get back down to 40 hours a week and still get the output and make your partners happy, that's what our team is here to help with. So I hope that some of these examples will help you see the sort of things that we help you with, what we're here for, and the things that we can kind of do. And I'm going to turn it back over to Katie here now. She's going to probably open you guys up to some questions. You have got it. So at this point, we want you guys to ask us some questions. 
take a moment, use that questions pane in your webinar control panel, um, and ask anything you ever wanted to know about Juris Professional Services. And I'm going to give everybody... Oh, go yeah, ahead. I'm sorry. They're, yeah, while they're doing that, um, and they're, they're getting their questions, I just want to um, familiarize people, if they weren't already aware of it, of a program we had called a, we have called a tiered service plan. And you know, normally, when when you come to us and, and you need us to help you with something, um, you have an option of we'll put together a statement of work, we'll define what it is you want or what you need, and and then you'll purchase a set number of hours. And if we don't accomplish it in that time, then we have to do another work order sort of thing. Um, that's how the, the process kind of works. But we have something called a tiered service plan too, that is where you buy a bucket of hours that you can actually use in 15 minute increments and it lasts for a year. So you can buy 25, 40, or, or even 55 hours over the course of the year and you get to send an email off to an inbox that all of us monitor where we can either respond via email to answer your question, we can make an appointment, we can call you back without going through all the hassle of coming up with a definition, a statement of work, and, and trying to figure out how many hours we need to purchase. And it's particularly helpful if you need uh, ongoing assistance. Um, it's particularly helpful if you're new to the firm and you're new to Juris and you, and you need really an expert that's going to be able to not only answer your questions on how to do stuff in the software, but also, you know, is this the best process? Is this what I should be doing? I want to do this. Can the software do this? So it's also great if you're interested in one of those, if you're not already a member of the tiered service plan, let us know and we can certainly give you information about it. Tyler, were you going to say something? Yes, and it's also great because it allows you access to custom reporting too. So if it, if you're 90% satisfied with a report but you just want some little minor tweak to it, like you don't want these fields or you want a different grouping or you want a different sorting or you want some minor change to one, it's great because those same hours can be, you know, used for that as well. You know, oh, you like it but it's landscape and you really like everything to be portrait. You know, all those little tiny little things you want changed with some of the, the reports, they can do that and it doesn't become a giant process of statements of work and so many hours available and so on and so forth. All right, and we've gotten a few questions. So I'm going to go ahead and throw our first one out there. Um, our first question is, can you guys explain the payment porter, portal, I'm sorry, <laughs> more in depth. Yes, the, the client that we were working with had a specific site that they had set up for a payment portal. It was specific to them. Uh, I would say it would probably be something similar to like a PayPal type account. Um, I believe they referred to it as legal pay. It was, you know, I, I don't know the in depth workings behind it, um, but. It could be a link to your to your company website or any type of link where you can make the payment. And again, this particular client had something that they were called, referred to as legal pay, and it went right to a secured site where the client could make a credit card or debit card payment. Were there any more questions on that specifically? Um, okay. Not. Go ahead. I was just going to say, if you have more follow-up questions on that, type it in there, and Celeste will jump back in in a minute. Um, we did have a question about the report distribution feature. Um, someone was asking, you know, is that Juris or Juris Suite? That is part of the Juris Suite reporting. Um, so if you don't have Juris Suite reporting, to me, that feature is my favorite, and it is almost. I mean. It's worth what you pay for just to get that. Some of the other things that we'll set that up for is to automatically run the trust account balance report on the last day of the month or your prepaid balance report on the last day of the month um, and automatically deliver to you via a PDF or you can set it up to deliver certain portions of information to certain people 
via PDF, so you don't even have to give them access to the Jura Suite reporting. Um, there's a lot more parameters. So if you don't have the Jura Suite reporting, there's also a lot of reports in there that you can run across the counting period that you may have been frustrated with in core Juris in the past because you can only pick one accounting period and run the report for that. Well, a lot of the reports have been modified in Jura Suite so they can go across counting periods and, and you can really specify your beginning and end dates for a lot of those reports. But yes, the report distribution is, um, is part of the Jura Suite reporting. So I have um, another question regarding reports. And I'm just going to throw this out to the entire team. So one of my biggest befuddlements uh, is that several reports do not put the name of the client on the report. I ran some reports for a specific client, and the report gave me the right numbers, but nowhere on the report has the client name. Can you guys fix that, or what is good? What, <laughs> how can you address that issue? I can take this that Tyler, I can, I can take that one real quick. That one is should be relatively simple to add to the report. Um, you can you know get a hold of the reporting team and see about having that added on there. Basically, if the client number is being shown on there, then it's almost certainly that the client name is easily um, addable to that report. And it may be that it's part of the query, and whoever put the skin on the report can be added um, to that Jura Suite report. So again, I mean Jura Suite is the custom reporting tool. It has all of the stock Juris reports in there, but um, even more on there. That's how you know we identified and addressed the need of custom reports rather than using an access window. We have Jura Suite in which we can write SQL code to grab that in there. So if the client code information is on there, then it should be a relatively simple affair to add the um, client's name. And you can always um, reach out to the, the customer reporting team to get the, them to add that. Or if you want to maybe spend 15, 20 minutes and try to attempt it yourself, you can always right click and make a copy of that stock report and then right click on the copy and edit it and see if that field isn't there from the uh, field options on the right and drag it into place where you want it. Fabulous. Um, our next question is when the client uh, when the client billings reach the flat fee value budget, the remainder of the t time is automatically changed to a zero value. Celeste, can you tell me more about that? That setup is going to be based on the fee schedule. So within Juris on a client matter, if you specify that this is a flat fee bill, after the matter is billed the first time, there is an option to leave it as flat fee or change it to hourly billing. This client apparently is changing it to the most common option of change it to hourly billing. The fee schedule that is on the matter at the time is going to control if it's a, if it's a zero dollar amount. We have clients that want it to be at zero, so it's obvious to the biller and the timekeeper reviewing it that they don't need to bill this, that this in fact was a flat fee. But you don't have to have a zero dollar fee schedule on that matter if you want it to be at the at an accurate amount. That's completely up to the user on how they handle that. I'm not t can't tell by the question if the, if the client wants it to stay that way, they don't want it to be that way. But that is an option. I had, yeah, Celeste, I had a, a, something similar with a client and we haven't implemented it yet but we're still working on that where um, once um, they have a budget amount, which we ended up putting in, we'll end up putting in probably one of the matter billing fields for a matter that once they hit that amount, um, every entry after that needs to be zero. And so we're in the process of, or going to be in the process of developing a, a tool for them that will automatically notify them when a matter is close to or has reached its budget and we'll even tell and we'll show them which entries need to be changed to zero 
and we'll put together a tool for them that will allow to put in like a date parameter that will, will automatically change them on the pre-bill to, to zero amount build. The hours worked would stay the same, but the amount build, and, and that way they don't have to spend a lot of time going into each entry because there could be a lot of them. Each entry on there and changing them to zero, um, the alert will tell that tell them for that. And I, I don't know if that's more that you were looking for as far as a budget and and changing entries to zero. I'm not sure if that was what you were looking for or not. Well, that sounds good to me. Um, our next question is can you give us an example of an event trigger? What would this do to me, uh, do for me? Uh, Tyler, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I, when, I, when we were working on the presentation here, I specifically used the event trigger because I know a lot of people will have a, um, you know, have a case management, they may have case management software in which you can set up chains and triggers. So basically when X happens, then move on to Y, and then when Y finishes, move on to Z. Well, that's the power of Jira Suite alerts, and you can have them built for you to handle situations. Um, so let's give an example of an insured insurer situation. Maybe you have a trigger uh, or an event, an alert built for you in which basically when WIP hits this value or when, you know, build and WIP reaches this cumulative value, you need to do something to it. You have to create a new matter that's going to be built to the insurance company. So you lock down the insured matter and you make the insurer matter. So rather than finding this out after the fact, you find it out during the fact. So you're not scrambling to address the situation afterwards. You are prepared. You're actively managing things that are happening. So when you have you know, work that needs to occur, when situations need to be uh, managed, it, the alert service running in the background constantly or frequently, I should say frequently, you know, several times a day, trolling through the data and looking for certain things that are happening and then causing an, an, uh, an email with an attached report or you know, cause just sending an email that tells you to go run a report, it allows you to better manage and um, proactively uh, manage situations and rather react to situations like maybe during the billing cycle or the end of the month when things are already crazy, the last thing you need to do is try to scramble to handle an additional uh, thing going on. There's, uh, I think we had another question about distributions. Did Celeste, did you want to take that one? Yes. When you set up a report distribution, there is actually a Juris Suite distribution service that's turned on on the IES server. If your server, if you turn it off or if the electricity goes out, that service has a setting to have it manually start or automatically restart. So this is something you may need to have your IT person look at if you don't have access to the server to make sure the Jura Suite distribution service is set up to restart automatically. Otherwise, if it doesn't, your report distributions are not going to fire off. And additionally to that, Celeste, shouldn't they be able to basically have be notified, have somebody be notified if the service doesn't start? Is that is that a setting I remember correctly? That may, not that I am aware, there may be something, a, a script that can be set up on the actual server, but not as, as part of the actual software. I mean, it may yes, be, it yes, may I, be a I was service, thinking it was an, an, yeah, IS an, an IIS thing. Yeah. Yes. So that's basically simply a property setting on the services. So whoever your IT person should be able to find that service, right click and go to the properties. And there's on one of the tabs is a setting there that tells you, you know, if if the service if something's happened, what do you want to do? Well, you set to restart, and that should that should keep that from happening. Correct. All right, I'm going to throw another one out there. Um, this is is a nice long question. <laughs> Um, so, we are in the process of trying to balance our client cost advantage account. 
which has never been done before for their firm. Uh, they received instructions from jurists on how to balance the client cost advantage account with the general ledger. The instructions are very difficult to follow because of different terms used for the same result. And our outside accountant says the instructions are nonsensical. To have jurists really work with our data to figure this out, uh, how would we be able to do that? Well, well, I'm not sure. Go, oh, go ahead, Tyler. I was going to say on this one, I, I would suggest you know getting a getting the jurist professional services involved and maybe on a conference call with your outside accounting firm, so that way we can get directly engaged with them to see what results they are looking for, and then maybe uh, have have um, a line of communication, you know directly between us, the people who know the program, and those people who know, you know, the uh, the accounting results they are specifically looking for within uh, this situation. So that way, you know, if they can say, well, we need to have the WIP balance recorded, and we need to have the AR balance recorded, and we need to have the payments recorded, you know, we can, from knowledge experts from jurists, can make that happen, and then also let them go, and then the Juris Professional Services team and you can directly engage in getting the results that they're looking for. So I would suggest in this case, you know, developing, getting some hours available if you don't have them already, and just getting all parties concerned on the line at the same time to determine what needs to happen, and then Juris Professional Services and you, the client, can work together to make it the way the CPAs want. Yeah, Tyler and I actually spend a lot of time helping clients balance their client costs. A lot of times, a lot of firms don't, um, maybe didn't realize or didn't know, depending on how long they've been doing it. Um, you know, the, the IRS has audit guidelines for law firms that are specific to law firms. And so I think what Tyler is getting to, too, it depends on your individual circumstance. If you had them on the balance sheet and you haven't been balancing them and you're set up as cash basis for hard costs and haven't been balancing them and writing off those, what happens over time if you've written anything off either on a pre-bill or on a, through a credit memo, it doesn't come off the balance sheet. So you end up with your balance sheet being wrong because it's showing way more AR than you actually have. And you also have the, have the disadvantage of not getting the tax benefit of the write-off of those expenses because you didn't take them out of there. So what happens, and this is where sometimes it's important for us to sit down with your outside accountant, um, a lot of times it's, the impact is going to be, uh, up, it could be a substantial financial impact to the firm in the year that you change that process. Now the IRS, their general guideline is they want client advances um, kept on the balance sheet. They look at it as if you're loaning that money to your client. They don't like you expensing it and then taking it to income to offset the expense when it gets paid, particularly if those things cross accounting periods or tax years. They, they don't like it. Now, there could be some arguments, and this is where it's going to be your outside accountant's call. There could be some arguments for still keeping it on the P&L if you've been doing that. But if it's on the balance sheet, you need to balance that and, and get that to a true balance. And it's going to involve probably expensing a lot of things. Um, and there's a lot of factors to come into it. I don't know where you got your instructions or what part of them, say, seem nonsensical to your outside accountants. So we'd have to see those too. So coming back to like Tyler's example, it depends on your circumstance. And that's where you really need someone like, you know, with an accounting background, or like myself as a CPA, that can look at it and and really make sure that we're doing the correct thing. All right, wonderful. Um, our next question is: Are you able to help with understanding how to evaluate profitability? My managing partner is constantly asking me how much we are making by practice class and client. I don't know how to get this information out of jurists. Tyler, I think 
you could maybe yeah. help with this one? Sure, sure. I've worked with a few firms recently on the profitability service that we're offering. So there's two ways to answer this question. First, I'm going to answer the way to do it right now without any additional reports from um, Juris and Juris Suite. What you would what you would be able to do is to take um, two pieces of information, both the worked hours for a um, practice class. You can use a working analysis by practice class by working timekeeper or working analysis by working timekeeper. And then you have basically the level of effort they have exerted you know, to bill hours or, or to you know, log hours in the system. You can get the working values. You could then tie it to the same time frame of your payroll record. So basically, you have how much effort they have exerted versus how much you've paid them. That can give you a total. If you're going for just basic, you know, I want to know as of this time frame, you know, their profitability, you would need to look at cash. So you can do the same thing. You could do a collections analysis by practice class by working timekeeper or collections analysis just by working timekeeper to see regardless of when it was worked, regardless of when it was billed, for this time frame we received cash receipts for these categories, again, practice class or timekeeper, and then tie that to your payroll records to see how, much, how profitable a person is. Now if you're able to get someone, um, the powers that be, to spend uh, money, you can get the profitability service in which we take a series of reports and we work with you. We have a high-level conversation with the managing partners and those who make decisions. What's direct cost, what's an indirect cost, and how are you going to calculate overhead? After that conversation, we schedule a follow-up. Okay, now that we've decided what falls in those three buckets, let's go through and accumulate that information and input it into the uh, software. Then we run the reports to make sure we've balanced by inputting it correctly, and then we dig into uh, the, the numbers and to make sure they seem appropriate and uh, answer any questions you, the administrator, might have. So that way we can have the final component where we present the data to the managing partners or managing committee to you know show basically here's the money you spent, we've got it up and running, here's the story it tells, so you can see that. So again, the default option is to take a collections analysis by practice class or by working timekeeper and uh, you know, get the delta from your payroll records or to get the profitability package in which you frequently input the information in and can run those reports that show you here's cash receipts, here's payroll, here's the difference, profitable or not. All right, was, wonderful. Yep. Uh, I think we have our next question for Stan. Um, is Juris capable of importing payroll checks from a payroll program? Well, you know, normally, um, if, if by payroll program, I'm assuming you mean something like an outside service like ADP or Paychex or something like that. The um, there's not a direct interface between Juris and those. Normally, what what you do is, is they would well, hopefully, in the year 2015, we're getting direct deposit for everybody. Um, but I understand some people still do check. But normally, so you would enter your payroll into Juris with a journal entry. And so usually we'll set up a, a recurring transaction journal entry template, and we can go through and, and um, tie those back to the payroll report that you, that you get from your outside service. If your outside service is willing or capable, they can dump certain information that you need into a CSV file that we can import straight into a journal entry in, in Juris. So um, if that's an option and that would, you know, you'd need to contact your payroll service and, and find out, you know, these pieces of information that you're using for that journal entry, is it pop, possible for them to provide that to you in a CSV file? And if they're capable or willing to do that, then all you do is import it and post, okay. depending on how big your journal entry is you're doing. But as far as like, you know, importing the checks uh, directly in, there's not a connection between Juris and outside payroll services. All right, thanks for that, Stan. Um, we have a question for Tyler. Um, 
can an alert be set up to send a timekeeper um, an alert when five days of time haven't been entered? Yes, that is one that is relatively common. Um, I know that the customer reporting team has um, some stock language that they use, and they pretty much just modified it. It's one that they've been asked before with different variations on it, you know, five days, three days, less than so many hours. You know, it, it, they have language like there that can easily be pulled together for um, somebody who needs an alert to do that. Um, and the severity of it can change because does it need to go to them and person X, their manager? But that one is a relatively common one. 80% um, of it is the same. It's that other 20% is firm specific. So you can reach out to them to get some assistance on the uh, on getting that happening um, based on your parameters and how you want it to run. All right, fabulous. Um, and I have another question for you, Tyler. Um, one of the biggest challenges for their firm is sorting uh, reports. Most reports only allow a few um, options. So how could you allow for more options um, and break reports down even further? Sure. So if you have a report that sorts by X, or that groups by X and then Y, but you need it to group by X, then Y, and then Z, um, again, customer reporting can do that for you. Or if you want to attempt your own solution, what you can do is to, again, make a copy of the stock report that's closest to what you're looking for, then be right-click and edit the copy of that report and try to insert another band. When you insert another band into it, it's basically saying, you know, here's the, the detail is the most minute, then you're going to group uh, by some uh, value, you know, maybe by working timekeeper, then you're going to group by yet another value, which may be the client. So all timekeepers who worked for that client, and then maybe you want the third one to be the practice class. So practice class, then the clients, and then the working timekeepers underneath it may be the example. So you would just add another band into that report and tell it that that band is grouping and sorting in um, this fashion. Again, you write, so once you've inserted the band, you can click on the little arrow next to the band and go to the properties and add what you want to group slash sort on. So it's not difficult. It's um, a relatively simple modification, and I say that as somebody who's played around with it and knows the software before. But you know, when I was learning this on my own years ago, I, you know, figured it out. I stumbled across the solution by just making copies of stock reports. And when I had a little bit of time here, um, you know, after the billing and the uh, monthly uh, accounting stuff had been done, I just tinkered with the reports to get them the way I wanted. All right, fabulous. Uh, we have two questions for Celeste. Uh, our first question is, where do I find instructions for setting up report distributions? How do I do that for my firm? If you want to try your hand at setting up your own distributions, the online help file is actually very, very helpful. It has very nice screenshots and in-depth instructions on how to do that. So when you're in the Jura Suite product, on the upper left hand corner, if you click on the Jura button and go down to help, there's a pop out for Jura Suite help. And again, it's an online help file. So you could just type it in. It's juris.com forward slash Juris help. And then you can navigate there and look for the distribution. And then, of course, if you need additional assistance, then you know, uh, professional services can assist you. But I would start looking there. And again, that was Juris.com forward slash Juris Help. And just search through the topics for Juris Suite Distribution. All right. Uh, our next question is, would timekeepers still get billing credit for the zero time after budget is mapped? If you are changing the amount to zero, so let's say the client budget was five thousand. That was the, or you know, we're saying budget slightly. So that's that's the bottom line. That's the only amount that you're going to bill the client, and anything else after that, the firm is just going to eat. Okay. If you change the rate to a zero amount and you bill those entries out, that timekeeper is not going to get credit for any billed amounts. 
So just looking at your standard billing analysis, billing activity, that attorney will have credit for working the hours and working the amount, but it's going to be reviewed, looked at as a, um, well, it's actually it's not even going to be considered a markdown because the work value will be at zero and the build value will be at zero. So no, they will not get credit for any build amount. If your proration options are set to bill hours and their hours are intact, then they'll get credit for billing the hours. So if that's something that you need to be able to track uh, as far as you know the markdowns. And again, if it's a zero rate, it's technically not going to be classified as a markdown because the work to value is zero, the build value is zero. So you may want a, a custom report to to track. Okay, this would have been the value. Um, you know, hours work times what the rate on the matter was to track that if you need to be able to, you know, track the profitability of, of that billing timekeeper. But typically the answer is no, you're losing the build amount on that. All right. Thank you so much, Celeste. Uh, I think I have another question that you might be able to answer fairly well. Um, are Jura Suite reports more flexible and allow, do they allow more specific report parameters than Jura Supplemental Report? In referring to the Jura Supplemental Report, I'm going to assume she's, the client is referring to the ones that are in access. The data and the fields and tables that you're querying are going to be the same in both products. Access is simply linked to the tables. Access has a separate set of slightly different in SQL, but you're able to have the same exact report parameters and options. It's just a difference between two separate products. You're using an Access database as opposed to going in and using Jira Suite. But if the field is there, you can query on it. So the flexibility is, is the same. Now, I want to Jira follow up Suite, on that real quick. Oh, go ahead, Tilly. Certainly. Um, I was just going to say that Jura Suite, we have a larger product knowledge on Jura Suite. Um, it's written in SQL language. You can do more flexibility, and it's easier for you to get assistance with a report in Jura Suite by someone on the, the professional services team because that's our main focus, not Microsoft Access. Tyler, you can follow up if you have any other yeah, comments the, on that. The benefit. The benefit of Jura Suite is the fact that basically when you want to, like if you have a timekeeper parameter on it, you can pick a drop down and pick your timekeepers, whereas access you have to plug in values. It's a bit more, the parameters can be the same, but in Jura Suite the parameters are linked to the actual values that can go in them, so it makes it a little bit easier to run the reports. And you also have the capability of adding parameters that aren't on there initially. Either that's something that our custom reporting team can do in Jura Suite, which uh, we don't normally do for Microsoft Access, and or even Celeste and Tyler can are pretty adept at, at adding a parameter if they need to. Um, so if there's a not a parameter that you want or need, we can add one. All right, wonderful. Um, one last question. Um, if we are on accrual basis, do we need to worry about balancing client expense accounts? So for this one, um, yes, the short answer is yes, you still need to do it. While the accrual setting takes a lot of the headache out by managing adjustments, so uh, when you go to accrual accounting in Juris, what it does is it lets you pick adjustment accounts. So if you mark off uh, a client cost advance during billing or if you issue a credit memo against it, you can tell it, take it from the AR or the unbilled account and move it to this write-off account. Yes, it tracks that for you, but what happens if somebody accidentally keys in the wrong GL account when they're doing um, distrib uh, when they're doing a check distribution? What if the rent gets accidentally keyed to client cost advance? So it does make it a lot easier to balance the accounts, but you still need to be reviewing them on a regular basis to make sure that there aren't any other kind of human errors outside of, you know, the normal workflows that are causing this issue 
to occur because that's the most likely one is, is you accidentally key something like via payment vouchers or journal entries to this uh, to the client cost account or the unbilled account. Um, so yeah, makes it easier but doesn't completely remove that need. All right. Well, thank you so much, Tyler. Um, our final question is, tell us uh, how do I get in touch with the Juris Professional Services and Reporting teams to learn more about what you can do for my firm? I can, I can handle that. Um, you can, Oh, a myriad of different ways, obviously. Um, if you know one of the consultants, like one of us, and you have our email, then you could certainly just email us. You could contact your account manager. And there is also an email that you can just contact. Let's make sure we get this correct. And guys, you may have to help me on this one. I think it's JPS, short for Juris Professional JPS. Service. It is. Thank you, Tyler. JPS at LexisNexis.com. All right, wonderful. And we will make sure um, that you guys all receive these slides. Not only does it have the contact information for each of the consultants you've spoken to today, um, but it will also have that JPS at LexisNexis.com email address so that you can just touch base with the team and get even more questions answered. Thank you all. Thank you first to our Juris Professional Services team, Celeste, Tyler, and Stan, for your expert advice in today's panel discussion session. I have a few quick follow-up reminders as this concludes today's session. Um, all attendees will receive an email within one week with a link to today's recording and any slides that were 